been watching numbers completely invert in the 10 years of my career um, where you know tribal communities were typically the most likely to attempt breastfeeding and now they've become the least likely to attempt breastfeeding in the first six months of, of a child's life and that breast milk is our, is our first food. When you make a change in someone's diet, you're asking them to change their values and their morals. And it's really important to take the time to explain why. To explain that these things are not upholding our health, that um, I do what I do because the elders sent me out there and said, I don't want to see my grandchildren suffer the way I'm suffering from diabetes and heart disease and things that are totally preventable. And when I'd asked them what they thought they needed to be healthy, Every single one of them, time and time again, told me that the culture is the medicine and they believe our foods can heal us. This was really the only thing I thought could make a major, you know, um, ripple effect kind of difference in three years was to in, lift as many people up as we can to be breastfeeding peer counselors. I took a, the nine month course on traditional food medicines last year with Val and got my certificate and I um, use that to take my third graders out. Every year we go nettle picking. I take them out in the forest to nettle pick, uh, clam dig. Uh, they go canoeing and get to do these different things where they're actually harvesting things from Oregon grape to um, r wild rose. One of the things that's setting this training apart from um, a typical breastfeeding peer counselor training that you would take is um, we've developed an exclusive traditional foods and medicines program guide for new moms and um, in it we talk about you know how traditional diets um, those dietary protocol protocols actually helped promote breast milk production we're promoting people you know get out and harvest their own wild rose uh, as a part of getting ready for the birthing process and preparing some really special medicines for you know your newborn. Yeah, we're talking about medicine that you put on your body, but plants infused in waters or eaten in food also uh, increase nutrition. I want all of our tribal communities to get better, to start to heal themselves, to turn back to their traditional medicines. And I understand that Western medicine has its place. Um, I definitely appreciate that, but why not try to intervene with some of the commonplace fixes that our elders used to use traditionally? When you're preparing for breastfeeding success, you're, you're thinking about those things, you're holding that space as you're preparing these medicines as well. And that is part of the process of just like landing in motherhood. I know that the fact that women are coming to these classes, it will make a difference just in the fact that they'll be more confident in themselves and that will help create that change. The fact that they're confident enough to do what they want to do, which is breastfeed wherever their baby needs to be breastfed. First Nations has been an incredible ally for this work um, since it began back in 2009. We started with um, planting some fruit orchards here at the tribe and they funded some of that work. They've provided funding for you know everything from food resources to be um, planted here on the res to uh, developing, helping me develop a beverage campaign that is now um, serving several tribal communities throughout the Northwest. They have funded some really innovative um, work that, you know, we sort of are listening to people in the community say, this is what I think we need. And we're, that's how we are approaching our funding requests to them. And, um, and they have faith in our work, which is more than funding really matters to me. So you don't feel alone. And for people who are coordinating these efforts, in, in their own communities across Indian country, that is, uh, it's like taking a nice fresh breath of air so that you can continue to do the work. That's what First Nations does. Things could move a little bit faster and we would be able to be a more effective by um, having a standalone nonprofit that services this, this kind of work. And we're hoping to, you know, foster um, economic, you know, um, efforts around food. We're just trying to prepare the Food Sovereignty Project with good intention and thinking about sustainability over time and how that is 
really about writing these messages into the the spirit of the future generations and and that means you know breastfeeding that means um, offering them amazing option food options at a young age and being able to treat people who are faced with epidemics like diabetes and heart disease in a culturally relevant way.